Hello and welcome. So you may have seen my um, video that I uploaded last weekend. Um, it was called something like my ultimate gaming setup for my lifestyle, whatever. Um, and in that video, um, I said that I was waiting for something to come um, to sort of finish off the setup. Um, I actually need. To, I, ha I have that thing now, which you just saw which is here the HD video converter. I'm going to explain why I need this um, in a few moments. There's a couple of reasons. Um, so yeah, this um, this little setup here got the, the HDMI switcher and the Elgato Game Capture HD. Now, if we go down here, the problem with this is um, this switcher here um, is HDCP compliant, which means if the console's got HDCP, um, this has will recognise the HDCP or whatever. Um, for some reason, it doesn't work with the Xbox 360, but it does if you stick an Elgato through the middle of it. So that makes no sense, right? So how am I gonna how am I gonna explain this, right? So, um, console goes into the switcher, um, you can run this switcher non-powered, there's a power supply for it, um, but I found since adding the, the other, the HD video converter, um, it's become unstable and requires the, the power source. In the manual it said that the power source is required for things such as skyboxes which may become unstable when using the switcher so um, it is a normal thing for it to become unstable for whatever reasons I assume it's to do with currents dropping whatever um, so yeah consoles go into the switch box um, and the problem I was having is like say the HDCP um, you couldn't just put everything into the Elgato um, you kinda had to disconnect everything put it in um, you know, do the consoles one by one because the switcher just really didn't work with the Elgato. It just it was a nightmare. Um, so yes, this HD video converter here. Um, so the setup at the minute is, even though it doesn't look like this, this is how it's set up. This goes into the HD video converter. This has a HDCP stripper on it, which allows me to then reroute that into the Elgato down here. And then that goes into the, the PC. Um, it's actually plugged into the PS4 at the moment. And then it goes off, obviously. Uh, reason it's plugged into the PS4 is because you need a power source. Um, actually, I realise I just need to add two more things to set up, not one, sorry. I need some sort of powered USB hub as well. Um, so that the Elgato's got power, you know, regardless of whether the PC is on or not. Um, and then when you plug it into the PC, it goes crazy, like capturing itself over and over again in an endless loop. I don't know whether it'll eventually like crash the computer but um, yeah so that basically means I can hook up all five consoles whatever well one of these inputs is a PC actually and they can see it's going fucking schizo so um, that kind of gets worrying after a bit so I'm going to disconnect that. Um, yeah so I can connect all five consoles through this HD video converter which strips the HDCP from all of them so we don't have any issues um, you you may or may not know that the PS4 has an option to turn HDCP off the Xbox One does it automatically depending on um, whether you're running a video application or a game um, but yeah basically um, it creates nightmares with this thing so now we have all five consoles um, connected and there is another advantage to this system um, which I didn't really buy this for but I realized I can now do this a lot easier um, when I record my 
retro systems, pardon me. Um, how to explain this? Right, this TV does not support um, probably below 480p um, resolutions via HDMI. So basically, if you plug something into the Elgato, um, the Elgato, you know, you use this cable um, with your standard, that's like your your yellow, your red one's actually yellow composite if you're not using component. You plug it into there um, and then it outputs it to HDMI. Um, but what was happening was it was outputting to a lower resolution via HDMI than my TV would actually support. So I had to get this like shit TV out, which for some reason supported this lower resolution via HDMI. Um, to play, you know, retro systems, um, you know, Mega Drive, SNES, Saturn, N64, all that stuff. Um, so now I have this, this converts the um, composite connections into 1080p regardless. So what this means is that I can have all of these consoles um, hooked up. Um, and then if, if I just plug this in here, um, yeah, and then if I flick this switch, should, uh, once it gets powered up, I hit this switch, and I turn on the Saturn. And I'll wait a few secs. There we go, so the Saturn um, is now going through the TV um, and the TV recognises it at 1080p um, and then eventually, it says it's initialising, um, but eventually the Elgato um, probably needs putting into a different USB or something. Uh, give it that one. Ugh. Sorry if I'm not pointing the, the camera at the things, it's a bit of a ball ache explaining this setup to be honest. Right, it says no signal. I don't know why. Um, none. Um, yeah, the HDMI is connected, but I'm not sure why it's it's not working quite at this minute. Uh, maybe, mm, maybe if I put it in NTSC. I don't know. Um, yeah, basically that's the um, the little setup that I've got the five consoles going in um, to a HDMI switcher there five way switcher this is uh, off eBay Chinese stuff um, and then that's going through to again Chinese stuff HD video converter this basically can convert composite and um, it can take in like 1080p signal and uh, scale it down to 720p, why I'd want to do that, I don't know. Um, and it's also got audio and coaxial on it that I've not tried. Um, and then you've got a switch, you can switch between you know the composite and HDMI like I did then. Um, you've got 720p, 1080p, you can switch between. So you can also do composite at uh, 720p. And then we've got Palin NTSC, so you can switch between 50 and 60 hertz. So probably useful as well if you've got a um, an import console and I don't know. It's probably of no use nowadays actually, because well, most t you know pretty much every TV supports 60 hertz. Um, so yeah, that is my setup. Um, I just wanted to do a video on that. Sorry if it's been really confusing. 
and long-winded but it is a good way of getting um, at the minute six six sources connected to the Elgato and you can just switch through them um, but yeah the other thing apart from a powered USB port that I really need to add is a um, AV switch switcher for these for composite connections um, and then I can connect like maybe eight get like an eight eight in one and connect eight connections to this um, this box so uh, and then have everything all going through the capture device and then I would have to mess about um, you know unhooking uh, consoles and all that stuff that is really is a pain in the ass and just ends up with consoles being piled on the floor and stuff because you can't be bothered to uh, keep setting them up and then putting them away and setting them up and so yeah that was a marathon video it would seem 11 minutes um, but yeah it's cool I like it good stuff